enjoying all aspects of its creativity, is any thought spent thinking, wondering about the history of this festival. This program discusses the history of our Calypso from Kanbule to Carnival. Calypsonians choked us. Pretender and David Michael Rudder talk about the oral tradition of Calypso along with renowned band leader Peter Minchel who shares his thoughts. An elder from San Pueblo has said, please be sure to tell your people that the purpose of our ceremonies is not entertainment, but attainment. That is the stopping of an Indian in the black Indian. Call yourself a true, true Calypsonia. It was an awesome sight. Near one million people walk free one night. Caribbean plantations glowed with flambeau light for Cambule, 1834. Our dramas, our songs, and our dances are not performed for fun, as they might be in the white man's world. No, they are more sacred than that. They are the very essence of our lives. So the first thing you ought to know is that the Calypso has a history. Last year I had a nice reply to David Rudder on the pet press, and I was showing people that when you hear Rudder or you hear Chocolates today or Spitender today, you must understand that this art form came way, way back and changed and changed and people added to it and the various persons made their contributions, four lines, eight lines, until we have verse and chorus, different types of calypso, commentary, smut, etc., etc., all types of calypso. And it is this that has made it a great art form. So the first thing you have, you have to understand is that our art form today, many, many persons have contributed to that art form. And in saying so, we are very, very happy that we have people like Pretender still alive. I'm not wishing them dead. Like, we do, we do always do that. <laughs> <laughs> just about two weeks ago, we had a great man, Lord Spitfire died. And every year we have a few of them going. They just died. And Pretender Town God is in good health. And, and as somebody just said, he's a living legend. Singing Calypso since 1929, before some of your mothers were born, when your fathers were born. And still around. And <laughs> a man who began to sing Calypso in short pants, he would tell you that. A man who began to sing Calypso and when his, his prizes were pennies. Pennies, he used to collect a penny and, and glad to collect a penny. He'll tell you about it later on. And still are with us. A man who we are credited as the master of extemporaneous singing. A man who is said to put extempo on any living thing alive. Because he has what is called, he carries with him that calypso art form. Why I'm saying so is that long ago, when you jump into the tents, you had to learn the art, learn the art, learn the art. And Lord Pretender Ulrich Farrell, who in 1972 was rewarded with that Medal of Merit by the government, certainly earned this art. I want to give you now, and I'm sure you're going to be happy to hear the Lord Pretender. Mm -hmm. yes. The children morning, I don't know where to start. Where is that? <laughs> well, I'll start from as far as I know. When I was a little fellow, I just say no fabrication from about five, six years, I found myself composing up the bad just over there. I was going to school. And we would play New Town Boys or Grovian. If we win the match, instantly I would start to, to sing some here. Yeah, you ever see more Western League Down Grove we were for and the whole school will be behind me. And in them days I talking about it. Singing Calypso was I know what, what crime to term it. A big crime, not a small one. In school, I used to be under the school beating and singing Calypso. And I determined from that age that I have to be a Calypso. I love Calypso. I can remember when I was about 10 years old, I had a 10 tongue by me. 
red hair sailor. Now in those days, even like now, every band used to make up some tent in the yard with bamboo and thing, and anybody could go and sing. Then I know contract and no special people singing. You just walk in any tent and you sing. And the tradition was once you proclaim yourself to be a Calypsonian, you had to sing. And I used to go in this tent. The, the you saw in that picture, the same girl and my grandmother, Tad Holman of the stage. But it, <laughs> and, and in them days, what, licks like peas. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing, Kiki. <laughs> Yes, I can remember when I was about ten years old, singing with a friend named Candy Bukan. And one eye span, take your nose, let's talk. <laughs> now, the one eye span I'll tell you about became one of the best collections in the country, known as King Radio. In them days, the name One Eye Span, Tin Tin Slim Fella. <laughs> and I sang her. Look, it's ironic that. I can't remember last year Calypso one. The Calypso, a voice or so from long time, stick in the head. You call Calypso long time wasn't like now. Long time Calypso, right through the air you sing in Calypso. I know with the ra radio and people that didn't get the idea that Calypso had no scenes in long time. But every week, you know, theatre, or every night we are by the Savannah, by them white people place, singing. Yeah. And I could remember singing a chalky. This could sing now, you know. Sure. Ten years old. I had a little girl by the name of Jane who died recently at Ovin Lane. I had a little girl by the name of Jane who died recently at Ovin Lane. She was so sweet. She used to dress so very neat. Calling all the young boys when she walking in the street. But this is what she say before she passed away. All rig with me resurrection day. <laughs> Ten years old. <laughs> and in them days, there no mic, you know. No, nobody not mic. And imagine a little fella. Ten years old in a squeaky voice, and you could hear a pin drop, and the people calling, Kaiso, Kaiso. <laughs> I could remember at a time I came in town. My mother since I was born, about four years old in New York, and she came back here for a little holiday, and I in a tent in Nelson Street, like 1929. That I'm afraid to say how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> 1929, at 12 years old. All I do is don't do, do, do stop talking about it. <laughs> Boy, and I'm singing. I'm living fine. This 1929, no woman at all to disturb my mind. I'm living fine. This 1929, no woman at all to disturb my mind. For what the woman wants is just what I need. Therefore, on me they cannot succeed. For when you can't come up with the dough, they shall call you bundle and tell you go. <laughs> That's 1929. And my mother, all of the stage boy, boy, and my uncle and them say, I want to disgrace the family and whatnot. But look at that now, eh? Hey, 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 hey. So, nowadays, now, I have a sister and a brother in New York to every year has come to Carnival. I see my brother reading Attila's book, a book written by him. Attila stated the facts and well, he wrote it. And when he read, they have me among the 12 all time great. Tears come out of the eyes. Oh God, they have you there too. <laughs> see, are you not talking? And now he said, he helped pull me out, he little too, you know. He helped hold me out this day. 